What we're going to be going over here is the direct labor, direct material, and overhead variance analysis, and we look how we calculate these different variances. And when you're talking about variance analysis, this is where really you're really looking and comparing your actual results for the period versus some budgeted performance. And when you're look, doing variance analysis, really you're dealing with three different amounts here, or three different budgeted amounts. So, uh, first you would have your static amount or your standard amount that you established here based on your budgeted budgets for the period. And then uh, that would be done at the beginning of the period. And then at the end of the period, you'd know your actual results here for the period. And then knowing your actual results at the end of the period, and which you've established here as your static or standard amount here at the beginning of the period, you can determine your flexible budgeted amounts. And that, again, would be done at the end of the period. Okay, so let's look at how we would uh, first set up our, determine our static or standard budgeted amounts here. So, and this would be some budgeted quantity times some budgeted price here. So that would be your static budget. And you'd be doing that for your materials, your labor, and your different overheads. So you'd have to know, the, you'd have to determine your, set up and determine a budgeted quantity times some budgeted price equals a static budget. That's done at the beginning of the period. Now at the end of the period, this is where you know your actual results. So you will know your actual quantity and then your actual times some actual price equals your actual results for the period. Okay, so now we know our actual results at the end of the period and what we had here at the beginning of the period, we established that our budget, budgeted or static amount here or standard amount. Now we can determine the flexible amount here and for the period. So, and that's really done at the end of the period. This is where you take your actual quantity here from your actual results and you take that times the budgeted price or budgeted cost. And that's coming from the static or your standard budget here. So flexible budget, actual quantity here based on some actual results times the budgeted price here based on your static budget. Okay, so there's your flexible budget. Now you can go and you can do your variance analysis. And when you're talking about uh, these materials, labors, and overhead, the difference between your actual amounts here and your flexible ones, amounts, those are gonna be a price or cost variances. And then the difference between the flexible and the static amounts, those are gonna be volume or efficiency variances. Okay, so let's start with our direct material here and we're gonna have uh, both purchase and price and usage and quantity variances involved here. So what we would do here for direct materials for our actual amount, and I've got everything color coded here. Uh, the actuals are gonna be shown, uh, actual amounts are gonna be shown in green here, and then our budgeted amounts are gonna be shown in red here. And then we also, we're also gonna have uh, some actual uh, prices showing in uh, dark blue here, or sort of black here. Okay, so working with our direct material. Now, this is where we take the actual quantity purchased times the actual price on a per unit basis. And then for the flexible amount, well, we're gonna be working off the actual quantity purchased that comes off our actual results times the budgeted price on a per unit basis. And the budgeted price is coming off our static budget. Okay. All right, so we've done that. Now the other thing here for a static budget, that's gonna be some budgeted quantity allowed times some budgeted unit price. And everything's based on units here. And then there's one other thing with the flexible, but or with our direct materials, we're gonna also have a usage uh, variance here. And that's really looking at our flexible amount, that's gonna be some actual quantity used times some budgeted price. Okay, so first for our price variance here, and again, that's, uh, it's gonna be between our actual and our flexible budget. That's where the actual price on a per unit basis, difference between your actual price on a per unit basis and your budgeted price on a per unit basis. Everything's on a per unit basis. So actual price uh, less our budgeted price or that difference times the actual quantity purchased here. So that's our price variance. You can see it's based on prices here and the actual quantity. Difference between your actual and flexible amount. And how we got this here, it's just a matter of fact, factoring out. That's why I have it color coded. The common uh, factor here between your actual amount and your flexible amount here for direct materials is those actual quantities purchased. So we just factor that out here and, uh, and then take the difference between the actual price and our budgeted price here 
that's going to get in that difference times the actual quantity purchased. So you see how we've I've got a color coded here and how you factor out these different quantities here. Okay, so that's our price variance. Now for our usage variance, it's again it's going to be the difference between our actual price and our budgeted price times the actual quantity used here. So that's that's what we're looking at. We've got both a price and usage variance. Now we're going to have a quantity variance. And that's the difference between your flexible and your static amounts. And that's, again, based on quantity. So you take the actual quantity used here from your flexible budget and compare it to the budgeted quantity allowed here in your static amount. So that difference times the budgeted price here. So you can see budgeted price was the common factor be between both our flexible and static amount. Okay, so just factor... Uh, your budgeted price out here times the difference between actual quantity use and the budgeted quantity allows gives your quantity variance. Okay, so that takes our direct material. We've got a price variance, a usage variance based on use, price variance based on the on the price, diff, actual prices here, actual price versus the budgeted price, so some actual quantity, and then we had an, a purchased here, and then we had the quantity variance based on this actual quantity used versus the budgeted quantity allows times some budgeted price. Okay, so that takes care of our direct materials. Now for our direct labor, go through the same uh, same uh, situation here. This is for our direct labor. Uh, for the actual amount, it's going to some actual hours used. Everything's based on hours times some actual rate. And that's for actual amount. And then for a flexible amount, it's going to actual hours used here times some budgeted rate because flexible amount uses the budgeted rates here from the static amount. And it takes the actual quantities here from the actual results for the period. So flexible amount, actual hours used, times some budgeted rate. And then the static amount is going to be some budgeted hours allowed here uh, based on our budget times some budgeted rate. Okay, so for our rate or price variance as they would call it. This is where we're comparing our actual with our flexible budget. And again, it's, we're dealing with those rate or price variances. So what we would factor out here, the common factored amount here is that actual hours used between our actual and flexible amount. So we factor that out. And then we just look at the difference between our actual hours used here versus the budgeted rate here under flexible amounts. So actual hours our actual rate, excuse me, not hours used, actual rate, or that's the rate per hour here. Uh, that difference between actual rate here and our budgeted rate, that difference times the actual hours used is our rate or price variance. You can see that. So for our efficiency variance, that's simply looking at our flexible versus our static budgets. So what would that be? Common factor there is the budgeted rate. That's the common factor. So we can factor that out and just look at the difference between our actual hours used and our budgeted hours allowed here. So that difference, actual hours used minus the budgeted hours allowed, that difference times the budgeted rate. That's the efficiency various, variance. Okay, so now for our variable overhead, we're going to have a spending and efficiency variance here. So for a variable overhead, the actual amount would be some actual hours used times some actual variable rate on a per unit basis. So flexible amount would be the actual hours used times some budgeted variable rate on a per unit basis. So flexible budget, again, is using uh, the budgeted uh, rate here for a variable overhead from our static amount and actual hours used from the actual results for the period. Okay, so that's for a flexible amount. And then for our static amount, we're just taking the budgeted hours allowed here times some budgeted variable rate. Okay, so for our spending variance, again, we're just looking at our actual versus our flexible budget. So what is the common denominator here or factor? We can factor out the actual hours used and then just look at the difference between our actual variable rate versus our budgeted variable rate. That difference, actual variable rate less the budgeted variable rate times the actual hours used is our spending variance. Again, that's based on those different rates here. And then the efficiency variance, that's looking at our flexible versus our static budget. This is where we're taking, and the common factor here is going to be the budgeted variable rate here because that's included there. So we factor that out and we just look at the difference between our actual hours used versus the budgeted hours allowed here. That difference times the budgeted variable rate. Okay, so that's our efficiency variance. So we've got taken care of our variable overhead. Now for our fixed overhead, 
uh, for our actual amount, let's just say we, this is where we're going to have some rate here. Let's just say we've established some rate here for a fixed overhead. So we take the actual hours used times some actual fixed rate here for the actual amount. Flexible amount, this is a little different. It's going to be some denominator hours times the budgeted fixed rate here. And we're talking about denominator hours, really talking about the total direct labor hours that was budgeted for the period here. So that's for a flexible amount. And then for a static amount, those would be the budgeted hours allowed times some budgeted fixed rate here. So for our spending variance, all we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, it's going to be comparing our actual versus our flexible budget and what is well we don't really have I can't really factor anything out here so what you're going to do here is just look at the difference here you just take your actual hours used times your actual fixed rate here and then you compare it to the flexible amount and that's simply your budgeted fixed rate here times some those denominator hours so just looking taking uh, comparing your actual versus your flexible amounts we didn't have anything we could factor out here so that's for our spending variance now for our volume variance that's simply again we can factor out the uh, budgeted fixed rate here because that's included in both our flexible and our static amount we can factor that out and then look at the difference between our denominator hours here and our budgeted uh, hours allowed here so the difference between our denominator hours less our budgeted hours allowed that difference times the budgeted fixed rate here okay so that's for our volume variance so we got our spending variance and our volume variance and this DH here, usually that's based on the total direct labor hours that was budgeted for the period. And again, everything here, our variable overhead and our fixed overhead, these were just based on uh, our direct labor hours for this example. And that's usually the case here when you're looking at both your variable and fixed overheads. And for the fixed overhead, we were actually working with a rate here rather than just a constant amount. But you may end up with just total amount here where you don't have any rate per hour but I'm using the rate uh, rate per hour here just to show how we could come up with these different spending and volume variances okay so let's move on here to just look at our key here so just going through our key here and I have shown it in green those would be the actual quantity purchased here AQP BQA would be the budgeted quantity allowed AP here, BQA was in blue, AP here is in sort of bluish black. That's the actual purchase price. BP in red here is the budgeted purchase price. AHU is the actual hours used. BHA is the budgeted hours allowed. AV is the actual unit variable cost. BV, budgeted unit variable cost. AF is actual fixed overhead rate here. BF is the budgeted fixed overhead rate and DH is the total direct labor hours. So you can see here our budgeted amounts I'm showing in red here for the budgeted purchase price, budgeted volume, variable cost on a per unit basis, and budgeted fixed overhead rate here on some per unit basis. Okay, so I got everything color coded and uh, okay, so we can move on from here. Okay, just to go over what we've just done here, and really all these uh, direct materials, direct labor and overheads, they end up under some, some sales variance analysis, and you end up looking at some contribution margin here or total profit variance. Okay, so and again, you're looking at your actual results versus some budgeted performance. Okay, so uh, looking at our uh, total profit variance, or in this case, the contribution variance here, our direct materials, labor, and overhead, they're going to end up under the uh, price cost or flexible budget variance, which is broken down between your sales price variance and some unit cost variance. So when we're dealing with the uh, material, labor, and overhead, it's going to fall under this unit cost variance. Okay, so let's look at, uh, go through it here. So for, and, and again, we're looking at our actual results versus some budgeted performance here. Okay, for our direct material variance, it's broken down between our direct material price variance here and direct material quantity variance. So first for our price variance, well, actually we're going to have a price and a usage variance. So that's simply the actual difference between your actual price and your budgeted price times some actual quantity that you purchase for the period. And then based on the usage here, that would be your actual pr difference between actual price and a budgeted price times some actual quantity used here for the period. So that's going to be your direct material price or usage variance. And then for the uh, direct materials quantity variance, that's simply taking your actual quantity used for the period and, and 
the difference between the actual quantity used and your budgeted quantity allowed for the period, that difference times the budgeted price. Okay, and then moving down to our direct labor variances, this is where you're gonna have a direct labor rate variance and then a direct labor efficiency variance. So first for your labor rate variance, that's gonna be your actual rate say on a per hour basis here, and, that and you would be comparing that to the budgeted rate allowed. So difference between your actual rate and your budgeted rate allowed times some actual hours used. So that's your direct labor rate variance. And then the efficient direct labor efficiency variance, that's simply taking your actual hours used here and the difference between the actual hours used and the budgeted hours allowed, that difference times the budgeted rate. Okay, so that's for the efficiency variance. Now, with our overhead variances, we really have both the variable overhead variance and the fixed overhead variance. So starting with our variable overhead variance here, we have our spending variance, and that would be the actual variable rate here uh, on a per unit basis, and compare that to the budgeted variable rate. So the difference between the actual uh, variable rate and the budgeted variable rate times the actual hours used, is our spending variance. And then for our efficiency variance, that's based on our hours here. That would be the difference between the actual hours used and the budgeted hours allowed here. So that difference times the bu budgeted variable rate here. Okay, so that's we've got our spending and efficiency variances for our variable overhead now for our fixed overhead here variances. This is where we were our spending variance. That would be the actual hours used times some actual fixed rate here in that quantity here, uh, it, it, we take the difference between that here and the budgeted uh, fixed rate here times some denominator hours, those are total direct labor hours. So that uh, multiplied out, that is the difference between, okay, so you just subtract those two or those differences to determine the spending variance. And then for your volume variance, that's just taking the total denominator hours, that would be the total direct labor hours uh, budgeted for the period and compare that to the budgeted hours allowed. So the difference between your denominator hours and the budgeted hours allowed times some budgeted fixed rate here. So that's our volume variance. Okay, so we went through our direct materials, our direct labor, and our overhead variances as a summary. And just to look at, move up here to our price cost flexible budget variance. We didn't go through it, but it would be the actual contribution margin here on a per unit basis in that and compared to the budget contribution margin on a per unit basis, that different times the actual quantity that you have for the period. And then that would be broken down between our sales price variance, that's just the actual price, difference between the actual price and the budgeted price times some actual quantity for the period. And then our unit cost variance, that was our actual variable cost, uh, difference between the actual variable cost and the budgeted variable cost times some actual quantity here for the period. But we were specifically looking at direct materials, direct labor and overhead here, but just to go over them and see how they fit in here to our overall in a variance analysis.